Hi guys, so today on Meek and Eggs, we're gonna be making lasagna, but not just any kind of lasagna. This lasagna is actually keto friendly. So if you're on the keto diet, like I'm on the keto diet, you can actually partake in this particular lasagna. So who doesn't like a little bit of Italian food, even if you're keto, right? So let me go ahead and take you through a list of ingredients that you're gonna need. You'll need a bag of pork skins, You'll also um, use two pounds of meat. One pound is ground beef. The other pound is um, Italian sausage because I kind of like to spice things up and who doesn't like a little bit of Italian sausage, especially in their lasagna. I'm also gonna be using two types of cheese. One is the lovely ricotta cheese that is typically featured in lasagnas. And then the second one is actually a mild shredded cheddar cheese. You'll need one large egg, as well as three calabacita squashes, one eggplant, as well as your choice of spaghetti sauce and your choice of seasoning. Now I'm choosing to go with um, salt, pepper, oregano, a little bit of um, parsley, because I like that Italian flavor. Now, if you so choose to, you can decide to just go with a simple salt and pepper and that should do the trick. So let's get started. So grab your apron, we're headed to the kitchen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get this baby sliced. Oh, that's gonna be so beautiful. So the secret about this lasagna, what makes it so keto friendly is the fact that we are actually going to be using eggplant in place of lasagna noodles. Um, and then you see that we're using the calabacita squash to kind of give you a little bit more of that reminder about pasta as you're eating the lasagna. Um, we're gonna toss this with a little bit of olive oil and some Italian seasoning, and we're gonna bake it in the oven for just a few minutes. That step is so important because it helps to kind of dry out your um, squash noodles so that they're, they're not so watery when you actually cook the entire lasagna because nobody likes a soupy lasagna. So I'm gonna finish this part. All right, so now that I've actually um, oiled my noodles down and seasoned them the way that I want them to be, I'm gonna get them onto this pan. I've got this rack here, um, and this is what I'm gonna place them on to help dry them out. Whatever you put them in though, try not to have them sitting in their own juices because that kind of defeats the purpose of drying them out. So my oven has been preheated to 350 degrees and it should be ready here in just a moment. And we're gonna pop this in the oven for um, maybe 10 minutes, depending on how much squash you're using in the recipe. 
All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get our eggplant and I'm gonna start prepping our eggplant. Um, the first thing that you'll want to do with your eggplant is cut off the sepals of the eggplant. So I've already cut my eggplant. I cut it to approximately one centimeter, but some of the slices are a little bit bigger and that's okay. Um, I also trimmed it, so I took the skin of the eggplant off of it as well. So I've got some nice hearty steaks here and I'm ready to move on to the next step. I'm going to batter this in beaten egg white um, and then coat it in our mystery surprise. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so we're done curling our calabacita squash. Now I'm gonna take it and place it in the oven for approximately 12 minutes. Now keep in mind, it varies based on how many squash you're actually using. So if you're using fewer squash, then it'll only take just a few minutes, but just keep your eye on it. Make sure that they're coming out to be nice individual strands that are dehydrated. All right, so here guys, I am actually just mixing my meat. I love to have lots of meat in my lasagna. If you're not that crazy about having that extra bit of protein, then you can always scale back to about one pound because one pound would honestly work for this recipe. Um, but I love having this extra, that extra bit of protein in uh, this particular lasagna. So I'm mixing this very, very well um, because I want the pork to be uh, incorporated with the ground beef. Some, a couple of options, a few things that you could do differently if you so choose. You could um, opt to go with a spicy pork sausage. I don't like a whole lot of spicy, spicy food, um, but if you'd like, you can actually do a spicy pork sausage. Um, one other thing to note, you could also do this step before you ever start. Uh, and that way, once you brown it and just set it off to the side after you've drained it, then that way it's already ready to go. It might make things a little faster for you. All right guys, so I've browned my meat and this is two pounds of ground beef as well as ground pork. Now, I did not season this because um, I think that it would just be over seasoned because the pork is already kind of salty. Um, but if you are just going with ground beef, you'll definitely want to throw some of those Italian seasonings in there. Um, but if you're following this recipe, I would recommend that you, um, or maybe just salt to taste and see how you like it. So our next step is we're gonna wanna drain all this excess grease. So now I'm actually gonna take my entire can of spaghetti sauce and I'm gonna pour that in there. Now mine uh, is actually, I believe it's uh, Italian, it's Italian sausage and mushrooms. And so I'm just gonna get that on in there, incorporate all of that. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Yes, oh my goodness, look at that. It is so delicious. All right, so now we're just gonna take this and set it aside. All right, so now I'm actually gonna be adding my squash in here with my my meat. The objective to that last step was to um, get our squash nice and oiled and toasty and get that water off of it because we don't want our lasagna to be a soggy lasagna. 
And so I'm just gonna mix this in here and get it nicely incorporated in with the sauce. And then I'm gonna take you to the lasagna part, dealing with our, our little steaks there. All right, so now this next step, all I'm gonna do is take my rolling pin and I'm just gonna simply crush my pork skins. If you don't have a rolling pin or you don't wanna use your rolling pin, it's quite all right. Simply uh, crunch the bag until you've got little flakes of pork skins. It's gonna be great. All right guys, so we've crunched up the pork skins and next you're just gonna take um, your Parmesan cheese and you are going to take about two cups of Parmesan cheese. You're gonna pour it into your mix and you're gonna get, get it nice and incorporated. Uh, and so this is actually gonna provide you with that bread-like quality on the outside of your eggplant. Okay, so next we're gonna take our eggplant steaks and I'm gonna simply coat it in the egg whites that we just beat. And then I'm gonna coat it in our um, pork skin and Parmesan coating that we just made. And so I'm just dipping it down in there and getting it nice and saturated on both ends. Now, it's ready to go in the skillet. All right guys, so I dropped these here in the, the skillet and I'm gonna let them sit here on one side until the edges right in here become a light golden color. And then I know that it's time to flip and I'm gonna leave them sitting there for about two and a half minutes and that part will be done. So this is my second batch of uh, my eggplant steaks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my oven back on. I'm gonna put my oven on about 400 degrees. Go ahead and turn on my oven. Now I've got things preheated. Now remember, everything is already cooked. The reason that we're taking this extra step is it just helps the lasagna set. All right, so I've um, already placed a, a layer of my um, eggplant in here as the bottom layer, and now I've uh, topped it off with a layer of my squash and meat. I'm just gonna take a handful of cheese and I'm spreading it through there. And once this melts, this is actually going to look beautiful. All right, and then I'm going to um, take some of my ricotta cheese.
And I'm just gonna spread that. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's just gonna be here in between the layers. All right. So I'm laying my steaks in here. Ugh, this tastes so good. And we're going to do another layer of ricotta cheese. And so if your doctor has told you lately that you need to get more calcium in your diet, then here you go. I'm helping you out. And um, when you do the ricotta cheese, on top of your eggplant steaks, it actually makes it a whole lot easier to spread. All right, and so I'm gonna do a little bit more cheese if you're not a cheesy person like I am, then uh, you can probably skip one or two of these cheesing steps. But I love all the extra cheese. It kinda helps everything gel. And it makes me feel like I'm really eating lasagna, regular lasagna. And this is gonna be our last layer of squash and a part of me keeps wanting to call this spaghetti squash but this is actually not spaghetti squash it's just squash that's been made to look like spaghetti and so we're gonna go ahead and place this all in here And one of the things that you might have already noticed, there's not a ton of water sitting down at the bottom of this tray. And that was because of some extra steps that we took, uh, but it's definitely gonna be worth it because it's not gonna be all soggy. This is also a great way to get in some of those extra veggies into your diet. I mean, who would know from looking at this that it's actually Good for you. All right. And so a little bit more shredded cheese because this is going to be what kind of seals the deal. I'm going to do a thin layer right now. And then I'm going to take a few of my um, pork skin crumbles because I kind of want my lasagna to be a little crunchy at the top. And so you might have noticed this is probably why I didn't over season it because I do like to use the, the mild sharp cheddar uh, a lot in this recipe. All right, let's get this baby in the oven. All right, so that's our timer. And turn this off. Oh, it smells so, so delightful. I cannot wait to get this on a plate. So the pan that I use to set this lasagna is actually a 12 by nine pan. Um, and so this actually feeds 12 people, but obviously, you know, if you're not gonna have as many people over or your family is smaller, 
and it's just you and an, an additional loved one, uh, you might opt to use a smaller pan and scale the whole recipe down. But here in my house, we love to eat. So this um, will actually go a long way for us. All right, guys, so here we just finished making a keto-friendly lasagna. Instead of using the lasagna noodles, we went with eggplant steaks that were coated in Parmesan cheese and pork skin crumbles. This whole project took about an hour and a half, and that was prep time as well as cook time. This is definitely something that you guys can do. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel here on Mika Makes. Yummy!